Hi everyone, today we are diving deep into something that confuses a lot of people, which is protein intake for diabetics. I know there's a ton of conflicting information out there, so let's break this down in a way that actually makes sense. Most of us are eating way more protein than we actually need. Recent research shows that while many calculators tell us to eat around 0.8 grams of protein times our body weight, that is actually overkill for most people, especially for patients with diabetes. Think about it. If you weigh 200 pounds, that is 160 grams of protein daily. That's a lot. And yet some people eat too little protein as well. So we don't want to eat too little, we don't want to eat too much because both can create serious problems for your health. Now, when you have low protein, it can destroy your blood sugar control, but overloading on protein is not the answer either. Keeping protein is helping your diabetes, I would say think again. I've seen diabetics with perfect diets whose blood sugar control is still all over the place, and it all comes down to one shocking mistake, and that's either not getting enough protein or overcompensating with too much protein. Eating like little protein can make your blood sugar harder to control because your body starts breaking down muscle for energy, leading to worse insulin resistance, constant hunger, energy crashes, muscle weakness, slow recovery after exercise, and so forth. And you end up eating more carbohydrates when you're not eating protein. And the biggest red flag is going to be your unstable blood sugar that you will not figure out why. On the flip side, Overloading on protein can strain your kidneys, can lead to dehydration, and even contribute to weight gain when your body converts that excess protein into fat or glucose. There's nowhere else to go for that protein. For every 2.2 pounds of body weight, you need around 0.36 grams of protein. So if you weigh 150 pounds, aim for around 54 grams of protein daily to prevent muscle loss, and that is the minimum amount. Don't go overboard unless you're an athlete or you're working out. A single egg has about 6 grams of protein, so if you are just having a piece of toast for breakfast and a salad for lunch, you are nowhere near what you need. But adding several high-protein meals or snacks throughout the day can push your body into overconsumption territory. The good news is that there's an easy balance. Start by including an egg with breakfast, a palm-sized portion of protein at lunch, and a good source of protein at dinner, while keeping portions reasonable and avoiding overloading your meals. I would say begin by tracking your protein intake as of tomorrow, aiming for a balance that supports muscle maintenance and blood sugar control at the same time without stressing your system. Focus on moderation to get the benefits of protein without that risks of too much or too little. Here's what's really interesting. Your body is smarter than you think. When you eat too much protein, it does not just store it as muscle, unless you're a gym rat or something. Studies show that about 70 to 80 percent of excess protein actually gets converted to glucose. This is a huge problem because it means that all that extra protein could be messing with your blood sugar without you even realizing it. Let me break down what this looks like in real life. Instead of stressing about huge amounts of protein, aim for around 25 to 35 grams per meal. That's more than enough for most people. That's like four eggs for breakfast, a piece of chicken breast about the size of your palm for lunch, and it's actually pretty reasonable when you think about it. Most people eat no protein for breakfast, skip to lunch, and eat a huge amount of meat at dinner. Not good. But here is where it gets really interesting. The type of protein matters just as much as the amount. You know how everyone's is pushing lean protein for years? Well, it turns out that super lean proteins might actually spike your insulin more than the proteins with some healthy fats. Mind-blowing, right? That means that you don't need to feel guilty about eating whole eggs instead of egg whites or keeping the skin on your chicken, provided that you're eating free-range chicken. Otherwise, I would just add olive oil or avocado oil if it is too dry without the skin. By the way, for a great colorful summary of this video, click on the link below in the description or the pinned comment so that you can get your PDF freely available to you. Also, 
Remember to check our brand new website at sugarmds.com, a much better experience than ever before. Now, let's talk about your kidneys for a minute because that is super important for diabetics. Your protein needs actually change based on your kidney function. So if your kidneys are healthy, you can handle more protein than someone with kidney issues. But here's the thing, diabetes can affect your kidney function over time. So you need to be smart about this. Think of your kidneys as a filter responsible for removing waste products from your blood. When you consume protein, your body breaks it down into amino acids, which are used for various functions like muscle repair and enzyme production. However, excess protein metabolism produces byproducts like urea and uric acid, which your kidneys must filter out. Overloading on protein can increase the workload on your kidneys, especially if you already have reduced kidney function. High protein intake may also elevate uric acid and that can lead to gout for some people or even kidney stones. For individuals with kidney issues, I would recommend to limit protein intake to 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight to reduce the strain on your kidneys and prevent further damage. This is much less than what typical protein calculators would suggest for healthy individuals, for sure. For those who have kidney issues, using a supplement like Sugar MD Kidney Support can go a long way by providing the nutrition and vitamins and prevent diabetic damage using alpha lipoic acid and benfetiamine and probiotics in that sugar MD kidney support that supports the kidney physiology. Here is something cool. Your body actually gives you signs, right? When you are getting too much protein and it is worth paying attention to them. For example, trouble sleeping. That could be because excess protein can interfere with your hormones like serotonin and melatonin, making it harder to wind down at night. Feeling bloated or experiencing digestive issues after meals, for example? Well, high protein intake, especially for animal sources, can be tough for your gut to process, leading to discomfort, constipation, or even diarrhea sometimes. Now, did you notice unusual blood sugar spikes? Well, when your body processes too much protein, like we discussed earlier, it will convert that into glucose, potentially causing unexpected increases hours after a meal. You might also deal with bad breath, dehydration, if you are consistently overdoing it on protein. Your body is pretty smart about telling you what it needs. Listen to it. Let's talk about timing because this is something people often mess up. You don't want to save all of your protein for dinner. Spread it throughout the day. For breakfast, try adding eggs, Greek yogurt, or a scoop of protein powder in your smoothie to stabilize your morning blood sugar levels. For snacks, think about options like string cheese, a handful of nuts, and some hummus with veggies. At lunch, include grilled chicken, tofu, or some hearty quinoa salad. And yes, we have some at dinner too. Whether it's a salmon or a plant-based burger or something like that, or a bowl of lentil soup will help. The key is to balance it throughout the day. And we can talk about plant protein for a minute, right? This is a game changer for diabetics. Plants like lentils, chickpeas, quinoa, black beans, adamami, and tofu don't just give you protein. They are loaded with fiber, which is great for helping control the blood sugar levels. Fiber slows down the absorption of sugar, as you know, into your bloodstream, making it vital component for managing diabetes. Plus, plant proteins are typically easier on your kidneys compared to animal proteins, which is especially important if you already have baseline kidney issues. Let's not forget seeds like chia seeds, flax seeds, and hemp seeds not only provide protein, but they also are good for healthy fats like omega-3s. It's like getting a three for one deal, protein, fiber, and added fats in every bite. You know what's really cool? Your protein needs aren't set in stone. They change based on things like your age, your activity, and your stress levels. That's why it is so important to pay attention to how your body responds to different amounts and types of protein. Here's my practical advice for you. Start by calculating your protein needs based on your ideal body weight, not your current weight. You can calculate your ideal body weight for men. You can see this on the screen right here. And for women, you can see it on the screen as well. So pause for a second and make a calculation and see what yours is. Begin with 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram of the ideal body weight 
that we just talked about. And keep a food or blood sugar diary for a few weeks. This is your personal science experiment, okay? See how different proteins affect your blood sugar and your energy and how you feel and so forth. Remember, you don't have to be perfect with this. Focus on quality proteins, reasonable portions, and how you feel. Your body is pretty good at letting you know if you're getting too much or too little. You just need to learn your body's language. For most diabetics, the sweet spot for protein is probably lower than what you are currently eating. But it is not about going super low either. It is about finding that balance where your blood sugar stays stable, your kidneys are happy, and you feel great. And hey, don't forget discussing with your doctor as well because they can also help you fine tune these guidelines that I'm talking to you about. And, uh, and everyone is different. You're gonna need some individualization here. So a little personal work may help. That's the real deal about protein and diabetes, okay? So no hype, no crazy restrictions, just practical information for you, you can actually use. Keep it simple, listen to your body, and remember, you've got this.